Okay, so we should be live here. I'll just check it out. Yes, we are. Awesome. Very cool. Well, excited to hop in here, guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to do a deep dive case study, step by step, exactly how it happened, exactly how it rolled out on a flip, on a successful fix and flip, very successful, made 30K in net profit. That's after all expenses. That's before taxes, 30K. 30,000. Awesome. Uh, before we get into it, if you're watching this live, comment hashtag live. And if you're watching this on the replay, comment hashtag replay. And what that does is it helps um, it helps the engagement with the Facebook algorithm because we're always worrying about the Facebook algorithm over here. Uh, so more people can see it, more people can benefit from it. Uh, so it's not just you, it's also other folks who are um, who can you know take this take their flipping business to the next level, whether it's getting that first one or what getting that uh, six figures six figure house flipper uh, as we're called here. Um, awesome. So a little more about me before I talk about this case study here. So my name is Victor. I'm a fix and flipper out of Gainesville, Florida. Um, I went full time about two and a half years ago with real estate. I was working like a nine to five corporate job, just wasn't cutting it. I wanted, I made, made the leap into real estate and haven't looked back since. I don't plan to, <laughs> you know, look back either. Um, started out, you know, did two flips my first year, eight. Last year did 20. The goal is this year is 30. So three, zero, 30 flips is the goal. That's a little more background on me. Um, I've done a lot. I've done like the wholesaling, you know, uh, fix and flipping, rentals, Airbnb. I really like the, the um, fix and flipping. So I've stuck with that. Very cool. So that's a little more on me. Um, and again, comment hashtag live if you're watching live, hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. Uh, we got some folks here. Thanks so much, Marcus, Alex, Paul, Tammy. Thanks so much for commenting. Um, thanks for joining. So let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's really get into it here. Uh, let me put this aside. So there was a flip here I did let me go over uh, briefly and then I'll kind of chunk it down. I actually have before and after photos, which is really cool. Um, I also have like the Zillow listing. I have my exact numbers, like how much I spent for this renovation, how much for this renovation, how much for this renovation, um, all that good stuff. So yeah, let's, let's just get into it. So basically I found this deal. I'll, it'll get into how I found it. So we bought this deal for about 80,000. This is about a year ago. This is about a year ago. Uh, bought it for 80,000. We put in about, uh, about 10,000 and then we sold for, I think it was 143,000 and we sold it with a seller credit and I'll explain what that was. Um, but we ended up making about 30 K net three zero. So 30 K net. Um, and that was awesome. Um, if you guys can imagine, like, let's say you're successful, you will be successful with your first flip. Like what would plus 30,000 do for you and your bank account now? Like if I can snap my fingers and suddenly you have 30,000 in your bank account, like what would that do for you? maybe you could pay off debt, maybe you could go on a vacation, maybe you can take some more time off work, spend more time with family, maybe you could, um, you know, invest or reinvest and hey, I want to take that 30 and put into two deals and make 60, you know, just kind of think through what that would do for you. Because uh, that's really key. So it's not just money, like, hey, it's great to make more money. But it's like, what does that money bring you is also is also the key here. Uh, so let's get into it. So I'm going to share my screen here. Share my screen here. So this is the house. So if you want to actually can drop it in the in the comments below so y'all can check it out here. Thanks, Obi. Thanks, Chris, for checking it out. So this is if you actually want to see the house, this this house. And not a lot of people, by the way, like other, I don't know, I don't call myself a guru, but a lot of gurus like don't share their numbers. They don't share um, like the property addresses, you know, as long as you guys don't like uh, bother these people, like the new owners. So this is it. Um, so it's 3504, so three bedroom, one bath, 956 square foot. So kind of a smaller house, um, but still like really nice uh, to say the least. So if you want to call bullshit on me, like, hey, Victor, you're not the real deal. Um, I can actually prove it to you that I am. So we you can see it sold for 80,000, just like I said, and then sold price 143. So this was, again, like I said, about a year ago. Uh, so November 2019, that's about right when we bought it. And then we had it under contract in February and then sold it in March. So the renovation time was pretty quick. I think it was about a month or any six weeks, like super quick and got it out there and got it listed. Um, let's take a picture. Let's take a look at some of the before photos. Let's start with that. So hopefully you guys can see this here. This is the before photo. So as you can kind of see, it's like it's in decent shape. They have some kind of like wallpaper trimming, which is kind of interesting. They got some stuff here. 
um, on the inside. So a lot of what we're doing is just like cleaning the place up, painting, flooring, then we call it good. So it's just not like a very clean deal, very minimal, very minimal deal. So this is like the living room. So this is like when you walk in, this is the living room. This is also the living room. So that, that was that same TV, as you can see in the left, that same TV. So again, decent shape, you know, they just have a lot of their stuff. There's their personal items. Uh, I'll explain more what happened there. But yeah, just some of their stuff there. No big deal. This is the kitchen. This is the kitchen. I'll tell you what we did with the kitchen here in a little bit. Uh, but again, like not bad shape, as you guys can see, like, I mean, just got some stuff here, but not terrible. Like it's not trash, like some of the places you've seen me do. Same thing here, kind of like decent kitchen. Take a look at other her stuff. This room was kind of bad. It had like this weird paint, like this weird, like we had to like scrape the paint and then paint it again. But you can see like newer water here, no water pan, but that's, that's, in, that's something else. That's a different story. This is one of the bedrooms, you know, it's kind of older carpet, kind of this red, <laughs> you know, red carpet, uh, rouge carpet, so to speak. And they got some paint here. Same thing, another bedroom here. So again, like it's not terrible, but just like paint and flooring would do wonders for the place, which is what we did. Um, another bedroom here. So again, three bedroom, one bath. Let's take a look at this one here, bathroom. Again, look at the bathroom, like tile looks decent, tub looks decent, toilet, fine. Uh, just a lot of stuff in there, like not that bad. Not that bad. This is before, this is newer HVAC. So that was one of the things like they did a newer HVAC. So that saved us some money. You have to worry about that. This is the back of the house. It is kind of like the back, back section of the house. It had this kind of like, it's like blue and black. Um, so this is the back section of the house. It, it looked kind of similar, if you can imagine those colors, but it was like that in the front. But again, whoops, that was the numbers there. Uh, but again, not uh, not terrible. Like, I mean, you look at it. Not bad, just get rid of some of the stuff, paint it. That had like a step there, which was kind of weird, but that's that's the before pictures. So that's what it looked like before. So let's look at some of the, the after pictures and I'll kind of get into the story here. So luckily Zillow has the pictures, so that's good. So this, again, if you guys remember, this was the living room. So I want to share like the, so this is even from the same angle, which is pretty cool. So obviously we staged on our property. So we did paint flooring and I'll go over those numbers here in a second. Uh, but we just obviously took out all the stuff, paint flooring, and this is what it looks like, staged it. Oops, put this over here. So yeah, look at how much of a difference that is. And would you rather live in this place? Nothing against them. Would you rather live in this place or would you rather live in this place? And which one would you think would sell quicker? So you got some more pictures here. This is the other angle again. This is that same room, it had a really cool design, really cool house design. So I like that as well. This is the kitchen. So if you remember the kitchen here. So what we ended up doing instead of like, cause the kitchen, like you can see this and even in the before period, like decent shape, like why would you rip it out and put in a new kitchen? So we just ended up painting the countertops. So you just painted the countertops and I'll talk about that in our like repair estimate budget. Um, but it looks like, you know, it looks like a brand new kitchen, you know, I just kind of refreshed it here. Um, kind of cleaned it up here, just paint again, paint and flooring can really do wonders. So this is a different angle of the kitchen. You got that same water heater to prove it's the same house. So obviously we painted that as well. Kitchen, kitchen, you know, this is one of the bedrooms. So you can kind of see that here. I don't know which one, but it doesn't matter. So it's the bedroom, bedroom, got this back bedroom here. This is the bathroom, this is the after here. So you can see that same angle. So you know, would you rather like, we didn't look, we didn't really do much, you know, new flooring, just clean it up really nice. And yeah, we made a mistake here, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that, like we painted, um, like they didn't properly tarp it. So they, uh, yeah, so that kind of wasn't good. They should have scraped it, but you know, whatever that house was long sold to go. Uh, another bedroom, bedroom. Again, the staging helps make it pop. And then like we cleaned up really nice. We actually like painted this uh, carport area, which was really cool. And um, yeah, this is, and this is the back. Let me just do that one here. This is the back. So just clean it up really nice, painted it, you know, nothing crazy. That was the deep, that's it, that's it. Um, awesome, so let me tell the story. Let me tell the story of how this deal came about. So got this deal uh, from a referral from a friend of mine and got the deal from a friend of his, a friend of mine, excuse me. Uh, we, he had it under contract. It was kind of like a whole, his was a wholesaler. Uh, he had a contract for about, I think, 70 or 75, and we bought it at 80. 
And what happened, like the, it was a inherited property, like a probate. It was also a tax delinquent property. So they were going to lose the house if they didn't sell it. Uh, so basically what happened, obviously, so they needed to sell a place. They got a hold of the, the wholesaler, like negotiated. Okay, cool. Uh, then what happened? Then we went to closing. So we went through all the title work, all, you know, all the necessary stuff. Okay, boom, boom, made that happen. Went through all the title work. And then we started talking about um, what happened was because it was like a probate and it was late on their taxes, they actually like the payoff and the payoff is basically like, hey, when you sell this place, like who, who do you have to pay off and how much? And the, the sellers had in their mind, like we want to walk away with a specific number um, but you know, we want to walk away with a specific number, but, um, they weren't going to get it because the payoff came in higher because it took so long to close. So at like the, like three days before closing, it was like, okay, because originally we we're going to buy it for 70 and like three days before closing, it was like, oh, uh, we can't, we're not going to sell it for 70 because we were not going to make enough. So can we do 80? So we had to like bump up our price by 80 or else we would lose the deal. Like the wholesaler was going to stick to his feet. And um, like, we were going to like have to, you know, up our price. So I said, you know, I think there's enough spread of the deal. Like it's a pretty minimal rehab, pretty minimal flip. So let's just make it happen. Um, and this is literally like a good learning lesson for you guys. Like with some of the like HGTV shows, like they don't tell you a lot of these like details, like last minute, something changed and almost the deal fell apart. Like they don't tell you this sort of stuff. So this is kind of like insider scoop, insider's access. This is like the real, real life flipping. Like things don't always go according to plan. Uh, so basically, so we closed on it. Okay, that was smooth, no problem. I set it up. I'll have to talk about this another time. I set it up so I was no money out of pocket. So I was able to buy this 30K net profit flip. Uh, I didn't put a single penny in of my own money, uh, which is awesome. And I mean, that's for another time. So I didn't use a single penny of my own money. Um, got that all set up. And then uh, what the sellers asked for is like, hey, we within, um, within a month, we're going to be moving out. Within a month, we're going to be moving out you know, is that okay? So we, we set that up. Okay. No problem. You know, as long as you're out by X and X and Y date, that's no problem. Um, it was supposed to be 30 days initially and it ended up taking until the new year. So we closed in like uh, November. And by the time that 30 days was up, it was like almost Christmas time. It was like a week before or something like that. And the, um, the sellers like needed more time. So this is another thing like people don't talk about, like, what do you do? You, like push them out? Would you evict them? Like in me, in my case, I knew like it just didn't make sense to evict them because I saw like they were actively trying to move out. Uh, but they just need a little more time. So I was like, okay, give them a little more time. They were able to get out January timeframe, early January. Okay, gave them the keys, started renovation, started renovation and uh, renovation took about four weeks, six weeks. Um, and then we listed it. So let's talk about the renovation before I move on here. Actually, I have my numbers broken out. So again, purchase price, all closing costs, repairs. So repairs was 10K total. Uh, interior paint was 1600, exterior paint was 1400. I think we paid a little bit too much for the paint, honestly, just because it's a smaller house. If I were to do it today, it would have been like 2,500 total, but you know, plus or minus 500 bucks, not a big deal, especially when you're gonna make you know, 30K. Flooring was 2491. Um, that's actually a pretty good price because it's typically like four bucks a square foot. So it was like three bucks a square foot. So not bad. And then we did like this LVP. I always talk about it in these videos. Home Depot. It's like this light gray LVP is what we did. I think we did uh, Workman for this one. Workman LVP. It's just, we just got it at Home Depot, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Is it Life Proof? Something Traffic Master? I can't remember the brand. But it's just one of these types of flooring. So you can kind of see that how this relates to how this relates to this. You know, so you can kind of see that. So just LVP flooring. Uh, we did the paint here. Uh, roof repair. So the roof, like the, they had a tree, and like the tree was too close to the house. So anytime it would be windy or rainy, like it would scratch up the house. So there was actually a leak. So we had to fix the leak in the roof. So got that fixed. The neighbor um, actually had a used oven. So we actually ended up buying their used oven. So instead of spending 500 bucks on a used oven uh, or on a new oven, we just had bought a used one, plugged it in, boom, made it happen. Um, anything, this is a good tip for you guys. Like anything you save when it comes to flipping is, is profit. Like anything you save is profit. So you, you, you don't want to necessarily cut corners, but you want to, how would I say this? Like you want to like find creative ways to save money. I'll put it that way. Um, the neighbor had a barn. Uh, let me see if I can 
pull this up here. Let's street view. So a neighbor had a barn and it was so ugly. It was that, but it was worse because it was decrepit. So we ended up painting it for them. So we paid to paint it. At first we asked them like, hey, can you, um, can you get this taken care of? And they were on like uh, disability, like social security. So they, they were like, oh, we can, you know, we can take care of it next month. We're like, okay, no, whatever. Our painters are already there. Let's paint it, please. Uh, so we painted it. It looks a lot better. It looked worse before, believe it or not. But as you can imagine, like someone drives up and they see this like nasty barn, like they're not going to buy this house. So that's why, that's why we did that. That was uh, two, 290. That wasn't a big deal. Roof clean and bleach. So we, so when the roof is a little more beat up or doesn't look as nice, but it's like a dirty roof, uh, you can clean it and bleach it. So we just hired someone to like, it makes it look nicer, especially when it's newer. Painting the countertop, just like we talked about here. That was about 150 bucks, nothing crazy. Really make it pop, made it pop, look like it's a newer kitchen. Let's see, paint countertops, uh, landscaping. So that's got like lawn mowing, landscaping, clearing out the lawn, um, just like that. Like just clearing it up a little bit, uh, making it look nice was key. Uh, handyman work. There's a lot of little things like there's a lot of little, little leaks to fix and like we got to put in like some lights and like little things, you know, that had to work. HVAC, like mentioned in the, in the photo, like the HVAC was newer. Uh, but we just had to like fix it up, like tune it up and that fixed it, no problem. Uh, then we had to get all the stuff out. So just like we saw in these pictures, like all this stuff. So they left quite a bit of stuff. Like obviously they moved out, but they left quite a bit of stuff here. So that's it. So that's where the 10K was spent. So you can kind of see it and visualize it. Okay, this is where I spent 10K. This is what it looks like before and after. Just so like when you're getting your own deals, like you can have that same visual here. Um, so that's that. Okay, so what happened? So we listed it, got all the, the renovations done, took about a month, no big deal. Got, uh, we're able to list it. Here we go. We listed for sale. Whoops. Did it fall in the contract? I don't think it did. I don't think it did fall out of contract. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, so basically what happened, we listed it for sale. And of course, because we stage it uh, and make it look nice, uh, we priced it right as well. Uh, so we priced it 139. Uh, we got like multiple showings. I think we got like 10, 20 showings within the first couple of days, multiple offers. I made a mistake. I took the first offer. So here's another lesson for you guys. I took the first one. I'm like, this is fine. This is great. It was 143,000 and they, we would have to give them a 7,000 seller credit. Seller credit is basically like when you give someone a credit um, towards like their closing costs. So it's technically not 143, it's like 143 minus seven. So we were basically accepting an offer for, what is that, one, 136. So that's that's what happened. So basically I accepted an offer for 136. So we, I accepted their offer in the morning. And then like that, a couple hours later, like I got another full price offer. So I kind of I kind of messed up there. So you just got to be careful, like give yourself a time frame. like, hey, we're accepting offers until this time frame, just to avoid that happening. Because that happened to me and that's <laughs> not good. Um, so got under contract. This closing process was pretty smooth. You know, real issues there. And um, yeah, just got it closed, you know, made the 30K net, which is awesome. If you notice the date here, March you know, 23rd, that's just right around when Corona was starting up. Uh, so I had a fear like, oh, what if this doesn't close? What if the buyers back out? You know, all that sort of thing. And uh, luckily it didn't happen. So, uh, you know, that, but that was a fear of mine for sure. Like, what if they back out? Um, luckily the, the buyer was a nurse. So, you know, really worked out there. Uh, but that's, you know, that's pretty much it. And then, you know, just a good deal. Bought it for 80, put in 10-ish and then, you know, sold for sold for like 143 minus a seller credit. So not a, not a bad deal at all, especially because it didn't take that much work. But it was, you know, I'll stop sharing my screen here, but it was a pretty bumpy ride as you, as you saw, like almost, you know, almost uh, like this buyer, original seller, excuse me, backed out because they needed more money. So if at that point I said, hey, you screw you guys. We agreed to a price like that deal would have been dead. Um, you know, it just, it just had a lot of opportunities or if I, um, if I maybe harass the old seller while they were moving out and I didn't give them enough time, then, I mean, that would have also killed the deal. Maybe they could have you know, roughed up the place and I would have had zero recourse, um, especially at that time. It's, it was a different time. I would have set it up differently now. Um, so stuff like that, like I couldn't, you know, there's definitely pitfalls along the road where you could have, where I could have messed up. But um, yeah, that's the 30K net uh, case study here. Um, so let me know in the comments below, like, hey, was this helpful? Did you learn anything? 
um, say like, yes, this was great, or yes, this, this was terrible and a waste of time. I want my, you know, 20 minutes back. So go ahead and comment that below. Uh, if you're interested in more of this stuff, um, again, my name is Victor. So I flip houses full time. I also mentor people how to flip houses, like how to get to your first deal, how to get to six figures, how to get to six figures. And then how do you, you know, um, how do you get to six figures and how do you um, like scale from there? Like, how do you get the money? How do you run your numbers? How do you get the deal? Like everything A to Z I teach you and I, you know, help with in the process and just help you get there. Um, I know people getting started, like have a lot of pitfalls, like, okay, if I could just solve this one problem, I can get started. And that's, that's what I help you solve. And that's how I, uh, you know, help you get there. Um, yeah, I have a lot of ton, ton of successful students all over the nation, you know, Texas, Minnesota, you know, you, you name a kind of state and I have students that are California. So it's not just here in Florida, but that's that guys. I need to wrap it up here, but uh, appreciate it. again, comment below. Like, Hey, was this helpful? Just share your comments. Like, Hey, uh, maybe next time talk more about the renovations or Hey, next time talk more about like the finding of the deal. Um, or Hey, next time talk about X, Y, Z, um, just to make it more valuable. I'd love to do more of these deep dive case studies. Again, I'm on track for about 30 flips this year. So I got plenty of, uh, plenty of ammunition if it's valuable for you guys, but uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, appreciate it and uh, have a nice day.